Awesome, guys. It's uh, good to see you both. I love your backdrop. Yeah, you too. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's, uh, her name is Delilah. My team named her Delilah so they can say, hey there, Delilah, every time we're on a call. <laughs> nice. Uh, so for those that are not familiar, James, why don't you give us a little bit of background on you and kind of everything that you're involved in? I know it's kind of a wide array, but um, would love to kind of just for the uh, community to kind of get to understand your background and where you're coming from. Cool, for sure. So uh, I've built businesses all my life. I've never worked for anybody else. Um, and, you know, largely been in the technology space for most of uh, my entrepreneurial career. And, you know, pretty early on, I was fortunate enough to, to get a lot of media attention across the things I was doing. So I became a contributing writer for Forbes. You know, I'm being a talking head on CNBC, Sky News, ABC, like all of that stuff. And so pretty early on in my career, like I started to understand the power of media um, and having your own personal brand and building up a media brand. And, you know, what's informed a lot of uh, my businesses now is the idea of uh, media leverage, right? So uh, for anybody who's not familiar with Novell Ravikant's uh, distillation of the four types of leverage, you know, you have capital and labor, which are the two oldest ones, meaning you got money, you put money behind an investment, you make more money, or you got labor, which is you don't want to do something you don't have the time, so you build a team to do it. And then the two newest forms of leverage are code, which is any tech product, right? Facebook, whether a thousand people are on it, a hundred million people are on it, it's still the one product. Same thing with media. So yeah, we're here today. We're going to record for however long, let's say it's an hour or anything. It's only an hour of our time. And it doesn't matter whether, you know, a hundred people watch it or, you know, a million people watch it, it's still an hour of our time, right? So media leverage becomes really, really powerful. And so I run two businesses right now. One's a tech company and one's a media company. What is in a nutshell? What's the tech company? So obviously, yeah, pretty- yeah the media part's an agency, right? Um, well, what what is all involved on the tech side? When you say tech company, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, for sure. So we focus mainly on like AI products. And so whether that's working with enterprises and and more of a not an agency, but an implement implementation uh, solution for them. But really, we're actually building our own IP internally to see how can we use AI to build other forms of leverage. So explain, because it's just saying I own an AI company is a little broader. Are we talking like something like Jarvis that writes text or what kind of what kind of AI? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, Jarvis is, uh, you know, an example of something that does it right now in terms of copywriting. In terms of the IP we're building internally, yeah, that's that's one of the aspects of what AI could be used for. But, you know, we've implemented a RPA, uh, which is robotic process automation. Mm-hmm. Um, not to get too technical or anything, but it's imagine all the admin tasks that, you know, companies have to do right now. Yep. What happens if all of that stuff gets automated? So instead of having to hire admin people, you can actually use your time, which is the highest point of leverage in something a little bit more creative than having to do, you know, the menial, whether it's data entry or anything like that, because a lot of those things can be automated. So that's where we're at right now in terms of, Know how advanced AI is in terms of practically being implemented. And is that like currently in the works of being launched or is that something that can be leveraged by the community now where they could sign up and like... Or yeah, it's still, yeah, it's still internal for us. So we're not in a rush to, to launch it really. Um, our idea behind this whole thing between you know, leverage making more leverage is we want to build up media brands, right? So whether you see like the huge trend of like paid newsletters, whether you see the huge trend of, you know, even just content companies in and of themselves across different verticals, we're like, all right, great. Like that's where we see uh, our highest newsletters. Okay, cool. Well, that sounds really, really interesting. Um, Obviously I'm sure we can't see it, but it sounds really cool. Um, That how, how did, how many developers does it take? Like how, how, how much time goes into working on something like that? I have to assume that you're constantly tweaking it, trying to make it better. So what's like, what's the team look like for that to be able to- Yeah. Build? So that team's probably about five-ish engineers working across that. Um, but yeah, for me, it's not, it's not the main thing that I'm focusing on. Um, so that's in the background and we're not in any rush for it, right? So we're not trying to compete with anybody, anything like that, because for us, the whole, the whole shtick there is we're going to build out our own IP the own IP being building our own brands from it, right? Yeah. So yeah, we're not really in a rush for that. Uh, mm-hmm. Where I spend most of my attention is, you know, quote unquote, the media agency, but it's more around the unique hook for it, right? And it's not even actually a hook. It's 
where we position ourselves. So I'm getting really, really big into spoken word poetry. And so that is what we do for brands. Like that's where we're going to position ourselves, right? So we're going to be creating case studies and profiling brands in poetry, right? Because for me, that's the point of difference. You know, I've been in the business game for a long time and I've kind of got to the point where, you know, early in my career, I was gifted with earlier wins. Mm -hmm. And for me right now, it's just like, keep on building businesses for the sake of it. Like that doesn't really satiate my soul. And so I'm doubling down on creating something that actually is really creative and expressive to me, which is poetry and then feeding into how that can actually support brands as well. Can you so, give us an example on that? I want, I'm really curious about that. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Sure, it's a little bit foggy to me. So you're creating case studies through poetry. Like yep. when I think of poetry, I think of like roses or red violets or blue. Luke's a good yep. girl. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I don't, man. yeah, I don't, I don't see how that, how does the two times. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. you Crush it, by the way. James Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can even read a piece, right? And so like the whole idea is, yeah, it is super unique, right? And for me, there's just like, when I talk about case studies, like something, because we're literally in the space of the next month, we're going to start to launch this like a lot uh, heavier, right? So I literally wrote a case study on Tesla's marketing campaigns and like Tesla's marketing strategy in, in verse, right? In poetic prose. Because for me, it's like a lot of this sort of content, whether it's, you know, business content, whether it's, you know, I'm really big on like life, philosophy, spirituality, like any of that stuff, like the actual wisdom, like that's not new. That's not novel, right? You can, you can talk to so many quote unquote, like marketing experts and they can t tell you like why Tesla, you know, grew, you know, their different marketing strategies, their different marketing playbook. Like, and that's, that's pretty cliche by now, but like for me, it's like, okay, cool. Like the actual, the actual content there. Like there's tangible value there, right? Like there's a lot you can learn from whether it's Tesla, whether it's Apple, whether it's any of these other brands, right? But it's like, how do you make them actually accessible and palatable for people where they're like, oh, no shit. I've never heard it like this. I actually want to listen to the end of it, right? Is it in video or is it audio? Is it you doing it? Is it? Yeah, it's actually all, all of it, right? So I write it, I, I perform it, and then we're going to create it into like mini movies. So it'll be like the audio video stuff as well. And then the companies pay for this basically? Yeah, for us, it's more of a, a content a content play, right? So how are we going to position ourselves as something that's actually going to be fundamentally different? Because mm -hmm. you, you, you think about like, and again, I'm, I'm big on Val Ravikant. I'm big on the idea of skill stacks, <clears throat> which is, you guys, you guys read Zero to One by Peter Thiel? No. Okay, cool. Like the crux of that is the idea of, he believes in like, the dichotomy of you're either a monopoly or you're not, right? And so the idea of to be a monopoly in your own space, it's like, if you double down and just become more of yourself, then you're a monopoly of one when you're actually just authentically you guys, right? So ad leaks is going to be a representation of what your both your personality is that intersection. So other people can't come out and have like a pod like this or have like a live stream like this because your personalities are unique in that, right? So the ways you guys are going to talk to like your guests, the ways you guys are going to kind of um, tease out ideas, like that's fundamentally unique to your personalities, right? <clears throat> So let's say I own Hanes. Let's say I own Hanes clothing brand. Mm -hmm. I come to you as an agency. What, what, I come to you and I say, hey, I've heard about you. Tell me what you can do for my brand. Cool. So the first thing is, um, first thing is understanding like what you want, right? Are you in a growth stage? Are you trying to like push more content? Are you trying to like rebrand? Like understanding that first and foremost, right? Let's say you're like, all right, cool. Like we just want to stand out a little bit more than what we're currently doing. So in the same way, you kind of think of like ad agencies where they're like, all right, cool. Let's, let's feel through like a campaign that is different. Like trying to say you're dropping a new line and you say you're dropping a new, like um, maybe you're, you're going out of clothes and you want to go into something else, right? You want to make a bit of a bang. Mm -hmm. So the idea there is like, okay, what's your point of novelty? What's your point of, I hate the, the trite jargon where it's like, oh, what's your point of differentiation or any of that stuff? But it's like, okay, why, why would people actually give a fuck? Are you allowed to swear on this podcast? Yeah. It's live. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's like, why would people actually care about you guys, right? And so for us, it's like, okay, we want to find that unique voice, let's say, and actually make art from it, right? So how we kind of position ourselves and what we're going through with our own rebrand is like, we write the poetry for brands. And it's like, what is poetry? It doesn't always actually have to be rhymes, right? But the poetry in and of itself is the art, like the art, the uniqueness of what you're creating. Because like, there's just content saturation, left, right, and center, right? Like that's, that's not new. That's not, you know, particularly um, groundbreaking for me to say. But it's like, when you think about like content saturation, it's like, well, why would anybody actually pay attention to Haynes? Why would anybody pay attention to any particular brand in general? It's because what, 
what sort of content you're going to be putting out is going to be resonant with a particular demographic, right? It has to actually catch people's attention. I'm still super like, so are you running, you're doing like SEO content, backlink building? Are you doing paid media, creative website development? Like I, I'm. It's more, think more creatives, right? Think more like content specific. So it's not more like backlink building. It's more like, okay, what's the, think about like a content machine. So yep. like what sort of content types, like is someone going to need, right? They're going to need like video content across socials. They're going to need like micro, micro cuts, like micro content from that stuff. We work with a lot of podcasts, okay. you know, you take your podcast, then you cut it down, right? Then you're going to repurpose it, whether it's through articles, whether it's through, you know, some, like a trailer, things like that. That's so highly creative, highly creative focused. Yes. Yeah. Great. And I can tell that you're very, I can tell you're very deep just by talking to you. Like you're very, back in high school, we would probably said artsy fartsy, you know, like you're a very deep thinker. I can already tell creative. So are you- You know, like, it's actually hilarious. I only discovered that in the last year. So I used to be like super logical, super like structure, 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 yeah. um, which is hilarious, man. Because in the last like year in particular, where like poetry has really come through me, like it's 180. Like a lot of my mates back in the days when I was building my early companies, now they see what I'm doing. They're like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? They're like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I still don't understand what he does. I just, <laughs> so basically, could, you're like, I think oh, what would clear the air is if you read us something that you've written for yeah, a company. Like, was something yeah, you've done it. before because it sounds really, really interesting, but I don't think I've ever heard it pitched the way that you're pitching. So, like, would you make ads for, like, if I came to you and said, I want Facebook ads made, you would make that whole thing of what we're discussing from the brand perspective into creative to run for performance yeah so like from a practical point of view right like I'm, i know i'm going real esoteric so let's bring it down to like more concrete right yeah um yeah so we don't position ourselves as an advertising company we'll position ourselves more as a marketing company right so the distinction there is like um advertising is like paid ads a lot of that stuff trying to run the funnel trying to run like the traffic in right and so look very concrete in terms of that, those terms like for me, just from a personal ideological point of view, like that's just real dry for me, you know? That ain't that fun. <laughs> it's pretty boring. And so like where we position ourselves more is around like marketing, right? So when you think about marketing, it's more like, okay, what is the brand? It, it is more of the intangibles. So you can think of us, you know, it's kind of pigeonholing. So like language in, in and of itself is limited, but it's like this idea of, okay, we're a branding agency, like we'll, we'll work with your brand. We'll create content that is fundamentally unique, right? We'll figure out what your voice is, what your vision is more so than, all right, here's the funnel. Yeah. We're going to create the landing page. We're going to run like ads to it, anything like that. Yep. So you're, you're like more of a, I would want to say to me, like a high level branding agency that creates stories and tells it through media for like big brands. Like that's how I would, that's how I would, kind of see what you're doing like you would go to like a Weight Watchers or a Jenny Craig and you would tell their story through highly detailed creative and content pieces essentially that they can leverage into their marketing plan totally yeah you could think of us in terms of like yeah we're storytellers like any anyone like sort of labels you want to put to it but yeah we tell stories like my background being like brand advisors for really big companies um really big tech companies as well so it's like I have a lot of the strategy and like the consultancy on top of it as well. So I can give them like, all right, here's the pieces you need to run. But yeah. Like my team's like uh, resources isn't best used in like setting up their ads or running their ads or going in and showing them their, their role ads or anything like that. Yeah. So how does one, how do, how do your, well, I guess what's one of your biggest, and I don't know what names you can share, but maybe you can, cause if you're doing case studies, what's one of your biggest pieces that you've done that you're super proud of that might be known by people is there something that you could share yeah so in um a lot of the so let me separate it right so in a previous life when i was doing like becoming like a brand advisor and all of that stuff i've worked with like 100 million dollar like cryptocurrencies things like that in the top 100 of market caps um so a lot of those things was like planning out strategies working with a lot of their partnerships a lot of things like that right and so can't really disclose well you can actually just google it um so you can find my names uh, that way but in terms of what we do with our case studies now think of it more as like educational content right so it's not case studies based on like we haven't worked with tesla for instance right so right. it's not case studying what we've done with tesla it's breaking down it's more like educational content around like here's why brands are growing right okay that makes sense yeah so think of it all as like genuinely like a media a media company, right? 
So we're building up content around, you know, how brands actually position themselves. We're building up content around, you know, what different marketing strategies are actually getting really good cut through. What are really novel marketing strategies? What are you know, things that brands should be looking at, you know, e-commerce brands, SaaS products, anything like that. We just do it in a really fucking unique way that other people wouldn't have come across. And you're doing, are you, I guess, sounds like you're doing full, I would assume you guys are doing like full rebrands for companies and basically, yeah. basically when you, I mean, and I went through that uh, with one of our clients, you know, it was $300,000, $400,000 rebrand. And basically their, their brand identity was found their whole, like, how they want to relay their message across like really, really deep stuff. Like what you're talking about for those brands that really want to connect in that way with their customers, essentially. Um, yeah. You, that's the stuff that, that lights me up. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's the stuff that lights me up to be honest. Um, for me, I just find that a lot more interesting because yeah, as you kind of described before, like where I'm at now, it's, it's kind of a weird intersection because for a lot of my life, I've operated a lot from my head. You know, I was like, yeah, thought my way through things, like was really proud of myself on, you know, the sort of mental models I knew and the sort of books I've learned from and all these other things, right? And so kind of just my own personal journey is more been like the, the quote that best defines my life now. It's like the longest journey you'll ever take. It's the 45 centimeters from your head to your heart, right? So it's pretty much my whole life I've lived from my head and now I'm on my journey back to live from my heart. So that actually reflects the sort of work I do now, right? So if you think through like brand, if you think through vision, if you think through, you know, the story you want to tell, like that comes away more from your heart, right? And so, you know, what you described before, you're like, okay, maybe that seems a little bit more esoteric and artsy. Maybe it is, but that's just what I identify with now more. But for me, what I find is like the really unique intersection where I just know there's like, it's a monopoly of one here is a, it's the in-between, right? So I'm creating art to distill and educate based on everything from your head so i can literally like show you what i mean like I've written a poem on like media leverage where i'll show yeah. you guys what you mean you're gonna you're gonna learn from it so if you're down for that i can read it now but yeah. if not let's do it sick all right well this is literally called media leverage if you have an important thing to say you must say it if you have an important way to help you must do it the problem for so many companies is that they won't commit, admit, or submit to the fact that they don't know how. Not how to create value, but how to share it. Share it to as many people as possible. Powerfully position themselves positively by publishing content that scales. The hurdle is companies are too scared content fails before they even put it out there, out to their market, customers, or prospects. There's so many aspects that they're trying to control, conflating prediction with conviction, which leads to restriction and contradiction of truly scaling. By not building up a media brand for your company, you are choosing passivity over proactivity, which will consolidate your market fragility rather than credibility. That's why so few companies have truly leveraged media because they're looking for guaranteed results in a made up encyclopedia. And that doesn't exist. What exists though is an inflection point where you need to appoint someone to cleverly create content lest you disappoint your customers because that's what they all want. Whether you like it or not, you still must confront that online content is the currency that creates credibility. Customers compare competitors by contrasting their content. That's how they evaluate which companies they can trust, which companies know what they're doing. That's literally what they're doing, reviewing and viewing whether you are legit whether you can bring them value and whether they can benefit from what you're offering. Because the mantra online is show, not tell. So the more you try to sell without a content carousel, the more you will smell of illegitimacy. If someone you just asked, if you just met, asked you to buy from, then can you see that online it's the same thing? If you don't have ongoing content, your customers can't get to know you. Company anonymity for credibility is actually not a virtue which is why we're at an inflection point. Because this may be the most potentially powerful period presented to brands, where media has exponential scalability of what you say lands. Because truly great content inevitably commands the demands from the masses. Because we are in an age of infinite leverage. You create a piece of content once and it can scale forever. An article can be read by unlimited readers. A video can be watched by unlimited watchers. A podcast or song can be listened to by unlimited listeners. You just have to create gold once and the rush will never end. 
This isn't to tritely trivialize the truth or pretend that building content is easy, but it's not and still takes time and skill. But if you do it well and do it right, it actually will change your business forever. Because media leverage is today's biggest op. The companies that understand that will ultimately rise to the top because online, every business is a media company. It's up to you whether you will have the content to accompany your ascension based on your comprehension of its importance. Because if your company has an important thing to say, you must say it. If your company has an important way to help, you must do it. You just need to make sure people know it. And using media leverage to show, not tell, is a key way you'll have access to your blue ocean clientele. And that's what it is. You wrote that? Yep. So, so can you rephrase like the, the output again? Like, is it, you, is it you speaking on a video or is this just like something that you can have actors do? You can have someone from the company do it or is it you speaking? Yeah, so when we actually build it out for other brands, it's like, yeah, we, they can have whatever voiceovers they want, right? But in terms of our own brand, right? Because, you know, this, because I'm the founder, like this is kind of like my my soul's expression. It's like, yeah, I speak it for, our, for us, but it's like, it's not always like talking head speaking, right? So it's like voiceover and then my creative team will mix it in to like, like a mini movie kind of thing. So have you right. seen the tobacco commercials, the anti-tobacco commercials? <clears throat> no, I actually haven't. <clears throat> so- um, if you look up like anti-tobacco spoken word on like yeah. YouTube, um, they're, they're big on this. They're really, they're doing this on almost every commercial. Uh, I saw one just yesterday and it's a guy in a studio saying spoken word. And it's really beautiful, truly really, as a creative. <clears throat> it's really pretty how they put it together, but nice. that's, that's the only output that I can see that's, that's like similar, but he's, yeah. So if you can look that up and take a little gander. Yeah. Amazing. Like, <clears throat> I'm seeing a, a couple of spoken word poets collab with other brands <clears throat> where they do the voiceovers uh, for like a full scale production. So mm-hmm. it's kind of that stuff, right? So this like media leverage for us is just one of our base plates underneath what we believe is really important. It's like I described before, that literally is one of the impetus for our company, right? So this is like our own branding content. But like if we're writing poems for other brands, it's like, yeah, they can voice over it however they want. It's more mm-hmm. the idea of you find the story behind it. And it's just like pun unintended, but it's just a really poetic way of speaking about something a lot of people have spoken about. You know, like I'm just, without seeing the anti-tobacco one, it's a topic that would have been spoken about for a very long time, right? Mm-hmm. It's not new. It's not new, like a campaign that's um, in opposition of tobacco, right? But the way that, as you're kind of sharing there, uh, Luke, the way that that's kind of... Um, conveyed the way that's actually expressed through a spoken word piece into interspersed with different forms of like media or a commercial, like that's unique. Like you actually remembered that. Right. And so mm-hmm. for me and what we do at our company, it's like, all right, whether it's actually literally spoken word or whether it's, you know, a different form of let's call it arts where people are like, Oh, cool. I get the message you're saying, but I've never seen it presented that way. Like that for us is the piece. Yeah. I think spoken word is super powerful too. So, and well, and it's definitely unique. I'll give you that. <laughs> Thanks. And that's pretty definitely much what we want to be. One it's definitely one. something that we've never had on the show before and I've never even heard of before. So that's that's great. Awesome, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, and you're in, we're in, you sound like you're Australian, man. Are you from Australia? Yeah, I'm based in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Oh, Melbourne. We have a couple, a couple people in that leagues from Melbourne, right? Yeah, we do. Does, does anybody run your creative that you take and put it in a market for performance? What do you mean by that? Uh, like, would somebody take your videos and run them as a Facebook ad, for example? Um, yeah, we kind of work as a team. So there's no like designated person who's like, all right, cool. We're going to chop this up and go to like uh, Facebook with it. But like, I do have a creative director where I'm like, all right, cool. Like, here's my vision for a few things like what's your ideas behind it because um yeah contrary to kind of what uh i might come across now it's like i wouldn't self-identify as a creative like that's not how i got my start you know mm-hmm. i've been a business person my whole life so it's like creativity's following through me now and it just happens 
to like sound quite creative, but like I wrestle some people where that's been, you know, their, their full-time job for a, much longer than me. And I'm like, cool. Like, here's what's coming through me. And I'll kind of like read it to the team. I remember the first time I read them a poem and I'm like, oh guys, I think we're going to like stop pivoting this way. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like their reaction was pretty similar to you. I was like, oh, we're going to write poetry on like business poetry. And they're like, huh? I was like, yeah, okay. Let me just like perform it. And so I, I did the, I did that one to them, actually. I think that was the first one I did to them. And they're like, oh yeah, we did not know what the fuck you were saying, yeah. you know, before, before actually hearing it. And similar to you guys, right? Because for me, like that just hasn't existed because what's, what's unique to me, it's like, I actually really fucking love poetry. I actually really fucking love business, but I haven't met anybody who has that same intersection. Mm-hmm. So I've actually never come across spoken word poetry that is educating on a lot of the business concepts I spent, you know, the past decade learning about and just living and breathing. Right. And so for me, that's where it really comes into being unique. So when we come, when we go to brand and say, you know, this is what we do, they also like, we've never heard it in this way. Right. And so, you know, whether you want to talk about niching down, whether you want to talk about differentiation, whatever, like that's why we stand as something that's really unique because it doesn't exist in, in terms of the same fervor and conviction that, you know, I have built the team around. Right. How big is your team? Um, across companies, we probably have 40 plus. Okay. Uh, specific, yeah, across companies, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. And what is that made up of like, like 10, like you got your, like how, does, how does that structure of your company <clears throat> like? Yeah, we're like, we've got a fairly decent creative team. So, so like 30%, 30% of creatives. Um, then we got a lot of writers in there as well. Um, Cause obviously building a lot of like written content. Um, so that's, that's a big team in and of itself. And then, and then a lot of managers, um, you know, to make sure everything runs smoothly. So managers slash accounts. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I got a quick question. Um, what is like a win for you in the next like five, 10 years? Like what's your, what's a big goal? What's a big hurdle that you want to <laughs> cross? Yeah, wicked question. Um, yeah, it's interesting, right? So as you can kind of tell, like I, I, I feel through and I think through like a lot of the esoteric. So five, 10 years is like a really long timeline for me. But what I want to see in the next, like say the next 10 years is I want, I want media leverage for everybody to understand how powerful it is, right? I want companies in say five years, in 10 years, I want companies to understand that every single company online is actually a media company, right? Because that's my assertion. Because online, like the whole idea of show don't tell, right? The currency these days, it's again, a little cliche to say the currency is attention these days, right? But it's like beyond that, like if we even reverse engineer it further, it's like every business is about relationships, right? So every transaction is about relationships. It doesn't matter whether you're B2C, and they just trust you enough that, you know, they see a Nike swoosh, they're going to buy from you. You know, that's still a relationship. So you break that down further, okay? What's the precursor to a relationship? It's trust, whether it's, you know, a life partner, whether it's, you know, friends, whether it's a business relationship, you've got to trust the other person before you're willing to get in a relationship with them, right? Let's let's go back again. How do you actually trust somebody? Well, it's consistency. Like I say, I'm going to do something and then you actually see me do it, right? So it's me showing, not telling you, I'm going to do something, I stand for something, whatever. So the equivalent today is like, as a business, whether you're selling a product or a service, well, it's the show bit rather than just telling them. And how do you show them? Well, how about you put out content saying you can, oh, I can actually create poetry and brands. How about you show us, you know? Oh, I can actually, you know, run ads that are going to get you more customers. Okay, great, show us, you know? So the show don't tell piece is really big. So then how do you do that? Like our assertion is that's through content. That's through building your actual brand, right? Because like Nike's been around for so long. Apple's been around for so long. You know, their brand is in essence, their show don't tell. Cause you're like, okay, cool. Like imbued in, you know, Apple, you see elegance, you see sophistication, you see minimalism because they, they've just shown it so many times through their products, through their content, you know, how they market themselves, all these things. So in five, 10 years, what I think is super fucking important is to understand that every single company is a media company. And so the ones that aren't investing in that way to understand whether it's brand, whether it's, you know, quote unquote, becoming a mini celebrity in your industry, whatever it is, then like just fucking entrepreneurial Darwinism, you're not going to be around for that long you know, on a 10 year scale. So that's number one that I think is really important for people to know. The number two, what like for me personally, what I just love to see way, way, way more is like businesses realize that they're actually pieces of art. That might sound a little abstract, 
What I mean is like, I find business very creative, right? For me, building businesses has been an artistic outlet. A market is a blank canvas, doesn't have a solution. There might be a niche where there's not somebody that's providing something. What's a unique way to enter that market, right? So for me, it's actually fundamentally creative. And so I want to see in the next five, 10 years, just way more arts in business. Because that's what I assert is beneath everything, like a true, like, I hate the word entrepreneur because it's, yeah, just gets, it's a bit overkill for me. But like a true, somebody who's truly entrepreneurial, let's say, like when they get in a flow state, they're, they're seeing, they're seeing different like opportunities in markets. They're seeing different ways to like build businesses. They're seeing different ways, to like build relationships with customers and clients and all this stuff. And like, that's a flow state, right? It's not something conscious where they're, you know, mapping out different steps. You know, when you're making your first, you know, seven figures or whatever, maybe you're looking at tactics and practicalities when you're getting like really, really high into like the really super successful entrepreneurs, they're just in flow state, right? They're just being their self. You think about someone like a Gary Vee, he's just been, he's been on brand for his whole like entrepreneurial career. Like if you go back to his early videos or anything like that, or you see someone like Steve Jobs, you see like any of these big entrepreneurs, Elon Musk, anything, they're just in flow state. They're just being themselves, right? Which might sound a little bit, you know, reductive to be like, oh, they're just being themselves. Breaking down, they're actually doing that, right? Because even if they didn't get paid for it, they'd be doing that because when they put it all on the line to build their businesses originally, they weren't being paid for it in that exact same way, right? So you just see there's just a level of authenticity and like conviction that comes from sincerity. When you're really leaning into that, my assertion is that's the place where creativity and art is actually created. So in five, 10 years, like, fuck yeah, I want to see way more businesses understand that they should be building art from their, their brands and their businesses. So they're kind of the two things that, you know, no coincidence actually underline what we try to do because that's what I think are the important things for everybody to understand in the next five, 10 years. Interesting for sure. Originality comes in mind. That's why you, you don't on the bachelor, you don't see like two contestants who are exactly the same person. They want diversity and originality. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and, that is, my, and that's my bachelor analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, no, that's, a, that's a proper like cultural flex. You're like, yeah, man, I've watched <laughs> enough Bachelor that I know what's up. Right. You don't have to the same people. You have to have originality. I do agree with you on a lot of fronts. I agree with you on the art thing. I will as a creative, obviously. I want everyone to have more artistic outlets, but yeah. What about you guys? I would love to hear from you guys. Like next five, 10 years, what's like um, ad leaks want to break down? Uh, Right now we're working on really trying to just grow user base subscription base but do it to where we can provide users um you know more value like we just dropped the vault so i don't uh we have like just finished we have an amazing team of developers that just finished a fully custom platform that allows us to house um basically start transitioning off of facebook to house our own library of videos and courses uh, we're working on maybe expanding into outside of Facebook, more into the maybe Slack or Discord realm, but it gets really, really confusing when we've built such a large scale community across all of that to be able to manage both and do it in a way, obviously not everybody's going to want it. Some want it, some don't. So we've been just playing with some different ideas on how we can grow and expand, but do it in a way that most of our users, you know, want to participate. Uh, and when you get to the level of when you have over 250,000 members, that becomes, uh, in, a, in a sense, it's a lot of difference of opinion. Yeah. So it's kind of trying to figure out what's doing best for the business. But I mean, we did just launch Founders Mastermind, which is um, something that partnered with Maxwell Finn and Jeremy Adams on with. So uh, yeah, sick. it's basically a business entrepreneur group. And then Luke gets to travel all around the world first class private if day. i break my leg or get covid i don't get to though which happened the last two times i'm on <laughs> dude, james i'm on this i'm on this stint man two months ago i broke my leg skateboarding and then i threw up my back because i was in balance and then i got covid so i'm like dude yeah, yeah. man the universe isn't uh playing fun with you <laughs> it's been it's been really testing for sure i'm gonna yeah. i should write a poem about it yeah, yeah dude <laughs> just channel your inner create creative man <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's yeah. cool guys uh, uh, it sounds like um you're mainly like a membership kind of community right like that's that's where you guys angle yourself yeah very 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 focused so we have you know we have the the free 
community and then we have our private paid um and this is going only into the private paid community where it's it's a lot higher quality obviously as you grow your community you get a lot of people that just aren't that are in there that just cause problems i mean let's just be real yeah i get it so we've tried to create this place where more of the serious marketers agency owners that actually want to uplift one another and learn and teach and help and basically create a place for that which you know is in my opinion before coming on is by far one of the best i mean the things that you learn in here are second to none because you have i mean we have so many people that spend so much money that have so much insight into different things i mean we have people that spend a hundred thousand dollars people that spend you know 700 million a year uh you know and that's just two people so billions and billions and dollars and hundreds and hundreds of years of experience that really people are just more than willing to bend over backwards to try and help one another uh almost it almost is like a tight knit family for a lot of people you know yep. so, which is really really cool that's awesome yeah like kind of feeling through kind of what i would say to the community like yeah, if this is going to the pay community and stuff like that, it's like one of the case studies I really love and I kind of, um, I look up to a lot is, you guys familiar with Visualize Value? I have not heard of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Visualize Value, um, he got his start uh, mm-hmm. in, I think he worked in like a New York ad agency. He was like a creative, right? Um, and then he kind of branched out, started just creating content that was really unique to him. So what he was really good at um, in his days in the in creative agency days was he would create pitch decks for like more dense uh, industries. So like your insurance, your kind of like legal, uh, like those sorts of industries and finance industries. And he'd take a lot of the complex uh, topics, right? And he'd create them into really simple, beautiful designs, right? And so it's, it's more like a high-end explainer visual, right? right? And so that's what he used to get paid um, big dollars to do. So he's like, all right, cool. Like that's his unique point of uh intersection right he's scarce resource so he's like all right cool i'm going to double down on that he starts creating content where he's taking like philosophical quotes business like ideas like from elon Musk, and Neville Ravikant, all this stuff and he starts creating quotes into visuals right so he just post these every day on twitter post these every day on instagram so he's built a huge following from it um then he just yeah then he dropped his own like uh educational content and he did some agency retainer stuff for a little while um but now he's like a really really established content creator right and so he's he's positioned himself like he's created an entire brand from for himself by just taking something that's not new again you take the idea of you know these quotes or anything like that so many people have been posting quotables and all this stuff for so long right but he takes what he can do better than anybody else in a space that nobody else has looked at it and he's just doubled down on that so like for what i would say to your kind of like paid community or anybody who's like marketing it's like all right cool what is like how i kind of think about it is when everybody's zigging sorry everyone yeah when everybody's zigging you zag right so what's everybody doing in your market that you can just do something fundamentally different because everybody really the actual content everybody's talking about very similar stuff right within a vertical within an industry like the actual content you're not going to differentiate yourself too much right gary v differentiates himself with his level of conviction and like his his personality and all that stuff and it's like okay if you don't have that what do you have so for us it's like we in the idea of like marketing whether it's content marketing branding anything like that there is probably with no like hyperbole close to maybe not a million companies but something in that ballpark like just a silly amount of quote-unquote competitors doing that right how many people are writing poetry about like branding and all that stuff? I haven't come across anyone. Zero. Right? Zero. So suddenly becomes one-on-one. But we're talking about the same content, but now someone's going to look at my content because they're like, I've never seen this before. Then they start hearing about what I'm talking about. And it's like, yeah, sure. There's a level of expertise that I have and a level of reference that I have where it's like, okay, cool. I start to differentiate myself. But it's like, if nobody's, if a tree falls in the wood, but nobody's there to hear it, did the tree really fall? So the same thing is like, you have fucking amazing things to say, but nobody hears about it. Nobody even pays attention to you. What the fuck's the point from a pure positioning point of view, right? So that's kind of what I would just say to your paid community. Got it. If that's at all helpful. Well, my goal is to, is to see you on my TV for an Apple commercial saying spoken word for Apple. Yeah, dude. Amanda you know, Gorman home, did home on the iPhone Super Bowl half time, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like... Yeah, you, you'll be able to run this back and it can be a bit of a time capsule. Because yeah, yeah man, in, in five to 10 years, like where I see this going for our brand is like, yeah, I want that to be ubiquitous. I want people to be like, oh, what's 
where can I learn about say Tesla or any of these marketing concepts or anything around like this sort of business stuff? And where can it be like actually fucking entertaining? Where mm-hmm. would, so how I, how I think about it, right? You think about art, whether you understand art or not, or whether you like know who's being painted or not, or anything like that. Sometimes you're just like, oh, that looks fucking dope. That looks amazing, right? Like, I wouldn't say I understand anything about like visual art or anything like that, really. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, oh, some things just look really awesome. Like, mm-hmm. And that's kind of almost like an objective thing where it's like, oh, that's just really unique. That's so cool, right? Yeah. Well, the same thing is if I can create a piece of content that's really entertaining and people would want to listen because I, I literally performed like a verse from my Tesla case study on a podcast yesterday, right? And she's like, I just want to listen to the end of it. It was more like a, um, it was more around writing in general. So she wasn't really in business, but she's like, oh, I'm not really in business, but I want to listen to the end of that. And so like, that's where I'm kind of bridging the gap. It's like, yeah, I'm creating content where people just want to watch anyway. And then by the end of it, they're like, oh, I just learned something about business or I learned something about branding. And so for me, that's, that's just the point of difference. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, that's all the questions I have, Justin. No, it's very interesting. It's uh, first for me, that's for sure. So I've never heard creative be transpired in this way so awesome oh i'm glad to uh be both of your firsts so yeah. hopefully it was memorable enough and uh as yeah, weird as that sounds. Spoken word cherry yeah <laughs> um, hey guys, I, I, I will say it's also a very deep like uh it's a very committed community because i used to go to some spoken word stuff like t- you know coffee the the ugly mug in orange um they had spoken word every like Tuesday or something like that. It's a very deep and rich community. So hopefully you just derive from, from them. Cause once they see it or hear it, they're like all ears. Yeah. But like, anyways. yeah, for me, hopefully it just bridges and just makes a lot of this stuff more accessible to way more people. Like, yeah, I do. I just write poetry kind of about everything in my life and I like business. I also love philosophy and all that stuff too. And yeah, they're just big parts of my life. So it's just me being me and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, I appreciate the time. Uh, thanks for hopping on. Um, I'm sure, the community appreciates it as well. A lot of deep, a lot of. I'm not a very deep thinker. Luke will tell you, I'm pretty dense and to the point. So this is a uh, makes me have to think. You know. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad I was able to uh, push that button and just make you think for a bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like I'm not like Luke was saying. I'm. I'm some people i mean i know that this would hit like i think this would be really good this is like stephen black's alley like i feel you know what i mean luke like this is his jam yeah no you're right and that's why i think this show is good because i can talk to creatives you can talk to media buying people because i don't know anything about that yeah yep or everything technical yeah but anyways yeah well i appreciate it james all right guys a lot of fun um thanks for having me and yeah, thanks for being on. yeah. I'll speak to you soon. Yep. Later. Hey, guys.